Okay, so and we're on to the next video now in the Daniel Smith. Um, 238 is watching. So this is the yellows and the oranges. They have now dried. So you can see what they look like now. They're dry. They're pretty nice. Some of them have a larger drying shift than others. But overall, pretty good. I've written on the pigment information now that it's dry. And I scan this will be available on my Patreon page. But looking at it, as you can see, they're quite varied in pigments. There's quite a few that are single pigment, and there's also quite a few that are multi-pigmented. Again, definitely to reiterate, Richard, reiterate what I said last time. It's definitely, I definitely like the Aussie Red Gold, um, a few of the Peridine para, orange, para Oranges even, Mayan Orange. And what took me by surprise was the yellows in general. You can kind of see that they're not really pigments I was expecting. There's not a single pigment PY150, which I'm a bit disappointed about, but the colours are here are quite nice. Particularly like the Azo, Azo yellow, I really like a PY151, that's a really nice looking colour. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to be rushing out to be buying any of these in my palette, maybe with the exception of the Aussie Red Gold or one of the oranges if I see it on sale. But nothing too exciting going on, nothing that's grabbing me. Um, I'm going to now start in this video with the reds and I believe some of the, the violets. The violets go across more than one page, so I'm going to do up to here, which is Rose of Ultramarine, the last one. And then on the next swatching video, I will do the next page, which includes the rest of the violets and the blues. Um, I am not going to be putting the pigment information on before I swatch it. I quite like to not know what's in the paint. It makes it a bit more fun, a little bit more exciting. Sometimes I think you can prejudge a colour by what it looks like based on the pigment information. So we're going to go ahead and start. If you haven't seen the first video, I recommend you go checking that out. I will leave a link to it up in the iCards. But that was the first swatching video and that was covering the yellows and the oranges. So, let's get started. Uh, make sure. And this is done in live real time. Well, in real time, I won't say live because it's a recording, but you get the idea. It's done in real time, so you see my real time thoughts, opinions, and views on the colours. I have used some Daniel Smith colours before, as I said, but it's I've not used all of them. And they have quite a large range in there. In their range, there's 238 colours on this dot card, so I think there's even more now, but I haven't used them all, so this is, some of these are quite new to me. So starting off, we have a Cadmium Red Scarlet, when I can find where it is on the page. That's weird. Oh, it's, it's a Cad Red Scarlet. It's got Cadmium Red Scarlet hue even, so it's not a genuine pigment. Rubets fairly nicely. Really strong colour strength, this one. I've literally just hardly picked up any paint there on my brush, and it's really, really got a lot of colour in it. That is really beautiful. Organic Vermilion. Now this, I know what pigment this is, is PR188. I've seen it before, I've got one in that pigment from Winsor & Newton. It's a really nice a soft red orange colour. And I made a mistake of putting them next to each other. This could be fun. It's quite pinky, kind of undertone, this one. I think I might prefer the Winsor & Newton version. I think. A really nice colour still. Really pink, actually. As I think the Winsor & Newton version is a bit more orange. So the next one is Quinacrinone Coral. I want to say I know this one. I think this is PR209. I think, I'm not sure, but it's definitely a pinky red. It 
It's not necessarily a very strongly pigmented red if it is PR209. You do have to use quite a lot of paint to get a decent colour. But it's a fairly good colour, it's really nice. So as normal, I'm putting concentrated swatches of colour at the top part of the square and then blending them out with clear water. This allows me to see the flow in the colour and as well see what it looks like when it's blended out with water and in a paler wash and in a concentrated wash, which is quite helpful. So next up we have Pyrrhal Scarlet. This is quite red by the dot, judging by the dot card. It's almost cadmium looking. That's a fire truck red, that really is like a fire truck kind of red. A bit of an orange undertone, kind of cadmium red light kind of feel to it. Quite a nice flow to the paint. Reds t do tend to flow quite nicely in paint along with um, blues. Yellows are sometimes kind of hit or miss when it comes to flow. Oops, that might be a bit loud. Next one is one I tried before. I think Otto gave me a swatch card to this one. When she did her um, Patreon dot cards. And this is Perrine Scarlet. Really nice red. Quite cool bit of a brown undertone to it, but it's really quite nice. This one doesn't flow quite as much, <laughs> ironically, after I just said about um, flow. So moving on now to the next page. So more reds. So the next one is cadmium red middle hue or medium hue. What's it say? It just says cadmium red med so I'm guessing it's medium rather than middle. I know that a lot of people, a lot of people don't want cadmium reds anymore, so they're seeking hues and alternatives. But I don't really see the point of having a hue in an artist range because you can just have an alternative. I think if you're making cadmium red, it shouldn't be a hue. In an artist range, it should be the genuine thing. If not, people will find an alternative that you stock in the range, and there are plenty of alternatives to cadmium red. It's a nice medium red. It definitely is a medium red. It's not really too warm or too cool. It kind of does just sit nicely in the middle. So we're going to miss a square just to allow it to dry. And the next colour is one that I actually have in my palette. And this is Perilene Red. It's a nice cool red, quite a pink undertone. It's a bit of a brighter version of Alizarin Crimson, I feel. It's got kind of that kind of vibe, but not quite as earthy. Very light like, fast, the Perilene colours, apart from Perilene Scarlet, I think, which is a little bit light like, fast. I think it's got like a two star rating instead of a one, like the rest of them. So going over another square again, we have permanent red deep. Not much on the dark card for this one. And this is a bit strange looking. It's very pinky. Not really too different from the Perilene ones. Maybe a tiny bit pinker actually. But it's not very deep. I wouldn't have said this is a deep colour in any way, shape or form. It's not highly like saturated or deep in value in colour. 
it's just quite a nice middle pink colour. I would say this is like a medium. I wouldn't have said this was deep. <laughs> So next colour is anthraquinoid, if I can pronounce it correctly, and anthraquinoid red. Let's try that again, anthraquinoid red. I'm really bad at pronouncing some names. This is quite, um, I think this is quite a popular colour from them. I think a lot of people use it. And yeah, it's a nice pinky red colour. It's a very wine kind of red. I hope um, artists don't get confused when they're drinking wine and painting at the same time. Accidentally drink their washes or their uh, paint water. It's not overly dark value. It's pretty. It's got a nice pigment. Um, nice pigment load to it. It's not too hard to re-wet either. It's got a good colour off of it. It's maybe a little bit more of a purple version of the Perma Deep. So the next colour is Alizarin Crimson. And I believe this is the genuine, like the fugitive version, PR83. I know that one off the top of my head. Now natural or genuine Alizarin Crimson is a really nice hue and tone. But it is not, well, it's supposed to be not very light fast. I'm currently testing light fast. It's a one from Jackson's. And so far, after six months of being on the windowsill, it's actually holding up pretty well. I've not noticed any changes at the minute. Alizarin Crimson's can vary quite a lot depending on the brand. So do have a look around at some swatches of some. I've seen that some that are more brown and more purple, and I've seen some that are pinker and redder, so really do have a good look. The next colour which we're going to go and have a look at, I think these might be dry enough to paint next to, is Pyrrhal Red. This one is re-wetting re re pretty nicely. So let's paint some of that. It's a really nice red. This is, tends to be the alternative people will go for if they want an alizarin crimson, not alizarin, a, a cadmium red light. People tend to go for a pyrrhal red. It's quite close in hue and it's not, um, it's not opaque either. So, oh, there's a bit of running there. The next colour is Permanent Red. So we have Permanent Red Deep, we've now got Permanent Red. And it looks like a completely different colour. It's definitely a lot more warmer than the Perm Red Deep. But I wouldn't have put them in the same sort of colour family. To me, they don't look close enough to be called Perm Red and Perm Red Deep. There's no Perm Red Middle either. Nice flow to it. The paper's starting to buckle a little bit. That is the problem with this paper. It's pretty affordable and the colours do look nice on it, but it can be a bit prone to warping and buckling. So these cards are still wet, so I'm going to try and avoid them. So the next colour is Rhodonite, and this is a really interesting one. I did do something about it in a Pigment Playtime episode looking at Opera Rose. This colour is made out of gemstone, but it has a weird thing where it changes in oxygen. It, it changes colour and it reacts to the oxygen in the air. So it is technically light fast, it's not the light that's affecting it, but it will change colour because of the oxygen. So what it's going to paint out like is going to be very different to what it dries out like after a week or two, the colour will change. It's not a very high pigment load colour, you have to use quite a lot of paint to get the colour. And it's quite hard to re-wet. It's best used from a tube, 
That is the problem with some of Daniel Smith's premium tech colors. Fresh from the tube is better than a pan. It's still a nice, nice soft pink. But because this and of course other Prima Teclas are still kind of untested scientifically, they're kind of new. Um, they're not through, there's not a big, um, there's not a lot of brands that use them. So it's quite unique to Daniel Smith. And because of that, people don't know how they're going to, it's really going to behave and react over a long period of time because the tests haven't quite been done. So the next color we're going to swatch out is going to be quinacridone red. This one's got quite a good pigment load to it, quite strong. It's a really nice red actually. Is this the one? I don't think this is the one that I've got. I think I've got quinacridone pink or well, violet. I think I've got in a tube form. This is really nice. It's a, it's a bit strange. It says it's red, but it's probably more pink. <laughs> I'd call this a pink color rather than a red. It's actually magenta, I think. I mean, yeah, look at that. Look at the uh, washout. The blending out, that's pink. It's not red. Definitely not red. Next up, we have another one of the Mayan colors. This is Mayan red. Not a very really generous dot card. It's actually quite difficult to re-wet. Um, not a strong cut, it's quite weak. So not a very high pigment load here. It's a soft red colour, so it's not red red like fire truck red. It looks like it granulates a little bit, which is unusual for a red. There aren't very many reds that granulate out there. Not that I've seen anyway, only seen a couple. Not sure, I'm, just, I'm not sure if it does grind it. There's a texture there. I can see something settling in the grooves of the paper, but it's not. That's quite a disappointing color. Um, has anybody else tried the Mayan Red from Daniel Smith? And is it this disappointing or am I just unlucky? The next colour is Permanent Alizarin Crimson. And it's just as beautiful as their non-permanent version. And it's beautiful. I'm very happy with that. It's very standard. Nothing... No, uh, nothing bad going wrong with it, so that's good. It's not too hard to re-wet. It's a nice, strong colour. I would always use the permanent over the genuine unless you're doing it for maybe sketch work. I would always test colours that are labelled as fugitive or not very light fast because you don't know how they're going to behave on certain papers or from certain manufacturers. Going back to the rhodonite, you can see there's some sort of texture in the paint. There's something that's settled in the deposits there. And it does, it's very a little bit in colour, it's not all uniform and smooth. So it's definitely a unique, interesting colour. So the next colour we're looking at is Carmine. So this is a 2 in light fastness. So it's not as light fast apparently as a 1, but it's still pretty good. And that is a really, really nice colour. It's pink. It's not, it's definitely a pinky colour, quite a deep pink. It's not red, it's pink. Um, I'm guessing this is a hue or a chemical version. Natural carmine, which is natural red, is often made with cochineal, which is actually shells crushed up from a beetle. I am sorry about all the loud noises that are going around. This is done in real time, so it's hard to keep it quiet. <laughs> so the next one is a rose matter permanent, which is this colour here. Um, rose madder is made from madder root it's, and another pigment usually that's very fugitive 
and it's made famous by Windsor and Newton, specifically Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria was a fan of it and loved the Windsor and Newton version, and that's why they still make it today, is because of her favourability of the paint. She liked it that much. This one's not too easy to rewet. It's quite stubborn. That does look quite a lot like the rose madder that I have from Windsor and Newton. It tends to be quite a weak tinting paint, so you have to use quite a lot of the paint to get any kind of strength and colour. And this is definitely true for this. It's not a strong pink compared to, say, the Carmine or some of the quinacridones that we're going to look at later on. And this is supposed to be a permanent version. But yeah, definitely like the one I have from Windsor & Newton, quite similar. But does it have? I need to smell it. Yeah, it doesn't quite smell like the one from Windsor & Newton. The Windsor & Newton one, Windsor & Newton one smells like roses, honestly. So the next colour is a very famous colour. This is Opera Rose, many brands make it, and it's supposed to be very fugitive. However, again, the dot card that is sat on my window, the swatch that on my sat on my window still at the minute, is actually holding up quite well. It's a very hard, difficult paint to rewet when from dry. It's better than wet, straight from the tube. But really bright. There's dye in it. It's basically PR one twenty two with a rhodamine dye added to make it bright and luminous. Really good for mixing. Mix some really nice fiery oranges and reds. And really nice violets while actually thinking of it. Again, test all light fastness of any paint that you're unsure of, particularly if you're going to be using quite a lot of it. This one doesn't have that great flow in water and is sinking quite fast into the paper. The next colour is a potter's pink. This is a English colour, um, I think originated in England, and yeah, it's really hard to re wet dry. And scrubbing it quite a lot. <laughs> and it's an earthy, pinky, red colour. You can use it for skin tones, but it does granulate. This one has quite a low pigment pigment load. It's very weak. Again, this one is definitely better from tube. Or if you're going to dry it in a pan, maybe add some honey or glycerin to it. But there's hardly any colour on this at all. This is a really bad potter's pink, if this is what it's like from the tube. That's really, really weak. Not a fan of that one. Doesn't really have any flow to it either. Doesn't help there's not really any paint there to flow, but... This is the colour I have in tube. Otto was very kind and gifted me a half pan of this colour. And I've bought the tube. I've not got around to using it yet, but it's a really nice colour. I think I've missed a colour, because I've got quinacridone pink and then quinacridone rose. So I've missed a colour. I'm going to do quinacridone pink at the bottom. Quinacridone rose is a pink. It's a very light fast, according to Daniel Smith. And yeah, it's a really nice pink. It's a magenta, so it's a deeper kind of pink. It's not a soft pink like Rose Madder. It's more of a sort of violety pink. And yeah, it's really nice. Being honest, at this stage, I'm also a little bit disappointed about the range of reds from Daniel Smith. There's nothing like they're drying down, and there's to me, it doesn't look like there's anything that amazing to write home about. They've got some really nice violets already, though. Already in a couple in. So that's really good. If you're looking for violets and pinks, Daniel Smith seems to be a good option. Next colour is Quinacridone Lilac. So it's a two in light fastness. And this is a magenta. It's slightly more purple and cooler than the... Quinn Rose. I'm not sure where they're getting the lilac from. Lilac is normally purple, and I'm not just talking P1 
pink purple Rhinac is purple purple it's a soft kind of creamy looking purple maybe colour names vary in country, from country to country but in the UK lilac is kind of a past not passed out it's a, I don't know how to explain it but it's a soft purple definitely not pink it looks a bit like um, quinacronone violet PB55 with white added to it that kind of look so next we have quinacronone magenta and this again is quite similar it's a bit more wine coloured it's definitely more purple it's a plummy grape looking colour these all have a really good flow to them the quinacronones as would be expected they're very light fast and they're just really strong potent colours so the next colour we have is pyrrole crimson so supposedly a red and yes it's a red I'm excited we have a red that to me looks like cadmium red deep strangely enough I've not come across a cadmium red light hue only a cadmium red medium hue slightly odd you'd have thought if they were labelling a paint cadmium red medium hue they would have the whole range of cadmium red light to deep but apparently not And next up we're on to the violet colours so these colours are going to be a bit more pink and more violet and again I think I've missed a colour I've missed quinacrylone fuchsia I'll add these on at the end so yeah next one is Mayan violet another Mayan colour this one's a bit easier to get going it's a nice purple not overly strong the yellow the mayan yellow wasn't overly strong either they're very soft very sort of low pigment loaded colors they're more gentle they're not as harsh as some of the other colors you can see on the screen such as the quinacrylones it, is, it would make quite a nice skin tone color i think like mixing skin tone with this would be quite nice or flowers as well i think not a very good flow to it i will add next up we have a really famous color by them a lot of people gush over it and talk about it and that's bordeaux um i mean it's just a magenta it's quite a pinky it's quite a deep magenta actually yeah definitely aptly named bordeaux as in for wine i think definitely does look quite grapey and quite wine like really good flow can't wait to move into the wet wet areas next we have quinacrylone violet another quinacrylone color and again I would say it's more purple violets I think of as kind of the true purple and actually it's kind of like mauve really isn't it it's not very purple purple more pinky don't know if it changes when it dries the quinacrylone lilac is still um pink <laughs> not dry that at all and that i would say that's pv55 a guess or pv88 i think it is reminds me of those kind of colors next we have permanent violet and again we're not getting any kind of real violets they're more mauves so they're purples or mauves they're not violet violet to me is a re really electric purple like violet purple 
And I'll show you what I mean when we get to one. If they sell one. Think of one off the top of my head, it would be dioxine violet. That's what I would consider a violet. These are mauves or purples. Because they're kind of more pinky rather than more electric. So next we have perylene violet. This is quite a saturated, kind of an earthy violet. Pinky, quite red. It's really beautiful. Real brown undertone to it. It's quite unique, but it's really nice. It's a bit like Caput Mortem in a way, but a bit, bit more warmer, a bit more pinker, and not so darkly saturated. And again, I expect this one will have a really good flow to it. And it does. It is just flowing nicely. Next, we have a colour which I'm expecting to be a bit difficult to re-wet. And it definitely is. It's hardly coming off the paper. This might take some time. <laughs> this is cobalt violet. They don't really re-wet very well at all. I mean, there's hardly any colour on that. It's really disappointing. Let's, um, I'm going to try. So yeah, if you're going to buy their cobalt violet, um, I would recommend adding honey to the pan if you're going to try and dry it or use it fresh. But this is really disappointing. There's not a lot of colour payoff on this at all. Even on the even on the little dot that I'm getting a swatch off of, it's not very fruitful. It's quite difficult to get the colour. Next we have Cobalt Violet Deep. Again, it's a little bit easier to re wet. I'm getting some colour off of it, actually. And this is definitely more violety now. This reminds me of um, a sweet called Pro Proba Violets or Perma Violets, I can't remember what they're called exactly, but they're kind of little tablets that are sugary, made of sherbet. That's really nice, actually, this colour. So, Cobalt Violet, big thumbs down. Cobalt Violet Deep, big thumbs up. It's a soft purple colour, really nice. Doesn't flow too brilliantly. It's a granulating colour too. Next up we have Ultramarine Red. Again, this one's not... Oh, hang on, hang on, it's getting there. It's a bit tough to re-wet. I'm not sure why they're calling it Ultramarine Red because it's... I suppose to not get confused with ultramarine violet, I guess. But this is obviously a purple. Very weak tinting, not a lot of strength to it. Again, needs honey if you're going to dry it or work fresh from the tube. Because that's really quite pale. Not a very high colour payoff. And these colours are fine and they have their uses, don't get me wrong, but... You're going to need more paint if you're going to paint, have them on palettes with really strong colours. So if you're having this on a palette with, say, like the Carmine up here, or the Opera Rose, these are really going to get washed out quite easily. And you have to be careful with what you mix them with, because the other colours will quickly devour it. For example, if you were going to mix a really strong blue, like an Indanfarone blue with this, the Indanfarone blue would completely eat this colour up. So next up we have Ultramarine, no, Rose of Ultramarine. Okay, so I think my phone did a funny thing and kind of cut out. I'm not sure if I've lost any footage or not. But we've done up to Rose Ultramarine. And the next colour, we're going to back to the Queen Acronym Pink. And yeah, this is definitely pink. It's pinker than the Queen Acronym Rose. It's a number two on the light fastness scale, so it's not going to be as permanent, but it's still going to be pretty permanent. It's not going to it shouldn't fade unless you leave it in the sunlight, but you shouldn't be leaving your paintings in sunlight. Really bright, very strong. It's a really nice colour. And it's going to flow really well. It's a quinacronome colour. Yeah, look at that. Really nice flow. So the last colour we're going to do for this video 
is quinacridone fuchsia. So this again is kind of a pinky ready colour. Rewets really well, super well. So yeah, it's kind of in between a violet and a red. It's not. It's kind of a mix of all three. <laughs> it's not really a straight up colour. Yeah, you can see the fuchsia it reminds me of fuchsia flowers. That kind of pinky, red, purpley kind of colour. Again, really good flow to it. So let's have a look at the swatches we've done. So looking at the bottom of these ones, these are the reds we started with. And they're quite warm reds, they're quite orangey, apart from the quinacridone and coral, which of course is a pinky red. Um, they're kind of, yeah, quite nice, there's nothing special, too special about them. There's none that are really sort of jumping off the page at me and saying buy me. And then these colours, so, so starting at the top, these are the other ones. So we've got again a more orangey hue, um, and then we've got middle reds, and then pink and cool reds. Again, the perylene red is really nice. I've used it in my palette. Um, again, the Mayan red was quite disappointing. There are no colours really that are jumping off the page. Actually, I lie, there are some. Carmine is really nice. I really like the Carmine. And I think it's permanent as well. I think it's got good light pass. Let me have a look. Where are you? It's a two light fastener, so it's okay. But that one, I've got Quinrose, of course, already. The Cobalt Violet deep down the bottom here is quite interesting. It's got an interesting granulation to it. It's very granulating, heavily granulating. And of course, I have the Perylene Violet and a few of the other ones. But yeah, apart from maybe that Carmine, I'm not really, none of the others are really saying by me either. I'm quite underwhelmed with all of these colours. I mean, again, the Ultramarine Rose. Rose of Ultramarine is pretty nice. I do like that one, and I don't have it. I've got a half pan that Otto gifted me, and it's really nice. I don't know if I'm going to go and buy it, though. But it is. It, they are nice paints. There's nothing wrong with them, necessarily. I'm just not going to say buy me, because I'm trying not to buy paints. I've got lots of colours to use, and there's nothing that's setting these apart from any of the other brands I'm using. But they are nice colours. Nothing wrong with them at all. So that's it for the reds. I'm going to write the pigment information down and you can find that at the beginning of the next swatching video. And the next video is going to be the other, rest of the violets. So let's take a packet. So we have, of course, violets here and these are proper violets. They are like ultramarine violet and carbazole violet, which are really intense. And then we've got the blues as well. So I'm going to probably do that in the next one up until probably about lunar blue. So half of this. Actually, I'm not sure because these are kind of green. Mm, yeah, actually, I probably will do. So that'll be the next video. It'll be blues and the rest of the violets, the more bluey violets. So I really hope you enjoyed this swatching and do make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that next swatching video. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.